Deja, you are that girl. I know you see me. You Can you see me? KP, I know you see me calling you, girl. Ooh, KG, that was cute. Yes, ma'am, KG. I know the service is working. I have Verizon Wireless. Our service don't break down. No. Yes, Janae. Work me, Janae. You have an incoming call, girl. Answer the phone. Now. Hey, Deja, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. We've been trying to do this for a long time. I've been on break from YouTube channel, and I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to come, trying to get back. How you mm -hmm. been doing? I've been doing good. I've just been working, 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 working in my business. Girl, you be working, working, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So do me a favor and introduce yourself. Well, my name is Deja. I went to a performing arts school. I'm very well known within dance. I was on Dancing Dolls for a very long time, probably like seven years, maybe. And yeah. <laughs> I finished Dancing Dolls. I tried out for a sensational stink at in Alabama at Alabama State University. And I made that team as well. And I stayed there for two years. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That's much <laughs> yes ma'am yes ma'am so we know that you were um a dancing doll yes what except for you know you being a dancing doll and you being a sting at like what other dance experiences did you have i went to a performing arts school um i danced there like every morning so mm -hmm. that was jazz hip-hop ballet point um tap if mm -hmm. they wanted to do that tap day contemporary, modern, like that was pretty much everything. So mm -hmm. I did that like every single morning since I think sixth grade, sixth or seventh grade, one of those. Um, before that I did ballet. Back so that's when you really started? Yeah, that's pretty much where I really started. Like, yeah, because I made okay. the drill team at my like middle school and stuff too. So I think that's where I would say I really got started with dance, yeah. Okay, yes ma'am, yes ma'am. <laughs> so. Can you tell us your experience dancing with the dancing dolls? Like, how was that? Like, you've been on TV and all of that. I mean, it was pretty, it was pretty good. Like, it wasn't just too crazy because we were like, they still treat us like normal people, I would say. I guess because we were like in public schools and like everybody pretty much watched it happen. It wasn't like a, these people just came to the city and this, this and that. So it yeah. wasn't like drastic change within like the culture so like that's something mm -hmm. i really liked about it or whatever because like i got to keep the same friends they weren't like crazy they probably do like little extra stuff at school but it was like pretty normal being on yeah. there only. and then of course tv was stressful but like it was normal living as a kid a little bit i would say yeah Social. yeah i can see that because you you being on tv and you still going to being in high school and you getting yeah. that you know experience on tv that's a lot to even manage anyway. So I definitely get that. So how was Miss Diana as a coach? I love her so much. Um, <laughs> she's pretty great. She was pretty tough on me when I first started, but like over time really it got better. So it was like, it's a growth thing with my coach. Like, of course, mm -hmm. when I started, it was like, oh, I hate going to practice, like this, this, and this, and all that. But it was like a process, more so me learning what she was really doing with yeah. me rather than me just being a child and like thinking like a kid, like, you know, and stuff. Cause that's of course where I was when I started. But like, as I learned and got older and grew as a person, I learned like that she was really doing all this so that I could be on my own in the world and so that I could take criticism so that I could like further extend my career and knowledge and not feel like a way about somebody else being over me and me being under them or them being more talented than I am, like stuff like that. So it's like, she makes me really look at life differently, I would say. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. can really, I can tell that she really gave y'all that tough love. Yeah, and like she really built that tough skin too. Honestly, like y'all yeah. are, I, I really don't hear a lot of the things about um, a lot of the dancing dolls as far as like when they're getting constructive criticism. I never really hear anything bad coming back from y'all. So I, I'm, I'm glad that she did instill that in y'all. So in what way do you think that 
um, being a dancing doll helped you prepare to be a sting gag? Um, definitely mentally, it helped me. Um, it physically helped me because like a lot of the exercises, I wouldn't say definitely weren't the same at all, nowhere near the same, but mm -hmm. physically I was prepared to endure what I had to endure, I would say. So physically I was prepared. Um, dance wise I was, but it mostly was from other sources as well. I would say because thing it isn't just like a major red type style right. or whatever so like i wouldn't just say that prepared me but like knowledgeably like with all that keeping up with a beat mm -hmm. prepared that like stuff like being on the field like that was definitely preparation so like i would say something like that yeah yeah because y'all be let me tell y'all dancing dolls they have like these 30 minute uh yeah. feels so i'm sure that that one minute really helped okay yeah <laughs> like yeah it, it really helped now it's as far as that, like, how was that managing that? Because it's just like with you doing those 30 minute, you know, field shows, now you're going into those like one minute and 30 second type of field shows. Like, how was that? Um, it was different. I would say, I would say it was easier. Like, yeah. if I'm being honest. So, like, I was really kind of happy about that because, like, I yeah. have way more time to really dance. Like, I have way more time to really put my all into it because I know that once I finish this minute and 30 seconds, that's it. Like, I don't have yeah, to. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so I was like, that's it. All I'm doing is going back up into the stands. And, like, that takes energy, but it doesn't take as much energy as a field show, like, to constantly keep going. Right. So, like, I think, yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can definitely tell because me doing a whole thirty minute field yeah. show is crazy. Like it's it was crazy. a lot. It was it was definitely like something because <laughs> something it, okay. It a lot to memorize it too. It was it was a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So, in your opinion, what is your definition of a sting egg? My definition of a sting ad is probably like this young woman who just comes in and just brings the honey to the bees, I would say. Ooh. So okay. like, it's like, it's an all around thing. Like, you know, our, we're hornets or whatever. So it's like, you just bring that extra something that just yeah. makes you get. Because I feel like every single ad is different now that comes in, which is great. So it's like, you just got to bring something, though, to the table to really just make a sting it. Because there are people who make a team all the time, but, like, you don't bring anything to the table. So it's like it'll just pass your course and so. But it's right. like when you bring something memorable, bring that little extra spark, they're going to always remember you. Somebody out there is going to always remember your name, basically. Yep. That's what yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You're right. You, you definitely yeah. right. So how would you say you – how would you say – um you gravitated towards the sting heads. Like, what made you say, I want to be a sting head? Honestly, Cameron, I would say. Like, okay. I learned about, like, sting heads and stuff. It was with, around the time when I got, like, the scholarship with the mm -hmm. show. So it was around that time. And so that's what really made me start looking into colleges because I started realizing, like, people really take this serious. So because mm -hmm. I was still at the time so i was like okay this is serious like you know dance is serious when i go to college too so it's like okay now i gotta figure out where i'm gonna go so what really made what really helped me was cameron honestly because she was always watching southern like never stopped watching southern videos every time i found this girl she was somewhere mm -hmm. watching southern on youtube like it never stopped so that really is what <laughs> I gravitate towards it so I was because I used to just be like what are you watching or whatever because it looked good so I'm like what are you watching and stuff yeah so then she started explaining to me like at the time she was my captain so of course like I'm this is my leader like I'm listening to everything she say so she was explaining it to me and she was telling me like the best of the teams name like four different four or five different teams and stuff so then I started just looking at myself and she was like you'll feel real good with Alabama State or whatever and like Ooh. I was like oh, okay, cool and so I started looking into it and then I started at first, I was like, okay, but I was scared because I'm like, this is, like, something different. Like, this is the college dance team. Like, I don't know, like, if they're mm -hmm. going to accept it or, like, you know, stuff like that because you got to try it. Like, it's super strict and stuff. So, I'm like, right. you know, part of being like, this is a real audition, basically. So, like, I was like, okay, like, okay, cool. So, that's really how it all just kind of came about because she put it in my head, like, to start looking around. And the first team yeah. that she showed me outside of, like, Southern was Alabama State. So I was like, okay, mm. cool. I like them a lot. And then I started 
realizing that like that's some that's more so how I danced like mm-hmm. as a person and as individual because I was like comparing myself to other schools and like thinking about how they would change me what could I bring there and what do I already know from there that like I just can't learn anymore like it was stuff like that that really made yeah. the decision so yeah hmm. go back yeah. go deep. you asked me about it so yeah <laughs> so I mean we know um Alabama State was like one of your main picks like was there any other school you were looking at? Yeah, but it wasn't for dance. Like the only other school okay. I was looking at was Ole Miss. Like I was really oh, yeah. when I I was really trying to juggle. Like was I really gonna go to college for dance or was I gonna go to college for education right now? And so right. it was really like a juggle for me. And dance just ended up winning because that's my heart. So you know, dance ended up winning. But yeah. like what it kind of was or whatever with me for school because I knew once I chose Alabama State. I think I chose Alabama State in like 2015. I knew I was gonna go there. It was mm-hmm. over. Like I was like, yeah, Alabama State. Like so you had, you had a plan. You had a had plan. A- you had a, <laughs> your mindset. Yes, ma'am. That's how you do it. Yes. Please. Um. So what thing that really inspired you? Mm, Amber. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I say it because not because she helped me, because she did, it's my girl, but because of how she was coming up. Like, I watched her almost every year she was on the team. So it was like, she always stood out to me, like I said, a singer and needs like that. Mm-hmm. that honey, I have to bring that honey. And so Amber was really what drew me in because she brought it. Like, she just brought it to me. I just love me some Amber. She was just everything. And it's like she was an all rounded dancer, but she wasn't the best on the team. And I like stuff like that because it's like you it shows you don't have to be the best to be the best. Like, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. So I really oh, like yeah. that about it. And that's even with me because like I feel like I'm not strong in the stands. So it's like, mm-hmm. but I know I'm strong on the field, like always. Right. So it was like like yeah. that. So it's like I know Amber probably felt ways about like, you know, like with herself too. So it was just like a I don't know. I just feel something about her when I saw her. Yeah, it was yeah. just Amber. <laughs> that's what yeah. inspired me. Let me tell you something. Amber, that's that's one of the most creative singers I've ever seen in right? my life. Okay? She is so creative. So I, I'm glad that you pointed that out with Amber. Yes, ma'am. Because she's definitely that girl. Okay? <laughs> so how was your first tryout? Like, were you scared? Was you nervous? Like, how did you prepare? For my first tryout, I was, honestly, I was terrified. Like, I was completely terrified. I was on tour at the time. So, like, I literally mm-hmm. had to leave, fly straight from tour to Alabama State. Well, really Atlanta. So, I flew to Atlanta. So, I had to come in for tryouts like that. And I was just terrified because, like, it was my first time being back home, like, away from anything. That was the first thing I was going to do. I didn't know how it was going to be. And then it's like, in my head, I'm taught to just get in the front, get in the front, get in the front. But it's like, as a person, I don't do that when I dance. Like, I'd rather you just see mm-hmm. me and try to be seen and stuff. So I was just trying to juggle out, like, what I was really going to do to be seen. Or like, you know, and different stuff that was really going through my head. It was just, it was a lot. It was yeah. fun. It was definitely fun. I really was stressed. Once, Let once me my tell you second, something. Try out. Stressed. Tryouts is stressful. Yeah, I was pretty stressed. Like I had to. Tryouts is very stressful. You have to be mentally prepared. Like yes, I had got my Mm -hmm. hair done when I pour and stuff for it. I did my makeup. I think I did my makeup when Mm -hmm. I was there. Lasted about. Well, do you want to know like all this part or like? Or (laughs) okay, tell it. (laughs) Okay, because I'm like, look, I run my mouth like (laughs) so. Yes, like it was um it was kinda like that. We had to have like certain outfits on to like stand out and I didn't want to just have on like a plain regular sports bra and bottoms. I wanted to have like a mesh sports mm-hmm. bra, like one with slits over here, yes. like different to stand out. The dance, it wasn't really that hard to me because like I said, I'm a field mm-hmm. dancer, so like that part really was a breeze. But then it was like certain right. things in tryouts that were like difficult to me, like they were doing stuff like can you stand out and do a stand? Like, it was, like, different stuff to see if you look, like, good enough to be with, like, some of the girls that were on the team that were there. Like, mm-hmm. it was, like, stuff that was going on in between that was kind of making me nervous. And then they were doing stuff, like, calling out certain groups when, like, mm-hmm. it was 
they knew they probably wanted. But I was always in the groups, but like I was still nervous about the groups and stuff. So like, right, that was that. And then Janae was being Janae, so she was <laughs> she <laughs> crazy. <laughs> but yes, so she was being Janae. So that was stressful. So um, mm-hmm. it was just a lot. That first that first trial was a lot. It was a lot of pressure. Even after we make the team, it was like immediate immediate pressure like oh yeah yeah because a lot of people say like right after you make it it's just like go time it's go, it's time. go time i say as soon as we made the team <laughs> like we probably they probably posted the picture and they looked at us she said all right instagram's gone profile pictures yep. black like those it, it, we all don't even know each other trying to get <laughs> And got had the same everything on. Like it was just a lot. Like it was a lot of stress. And then all we had was three hours. Like three hours yeah. to get it done. Like because it was. I remember like it was yesterday. It was three forty five on the dot when we found out. By six o'clock that night, we had to have all this stuff. We had to all be exactly alike. All hair had to be gone, nails gone. Like I was just like, this is crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this, yep. that's yep, that's yes, yes. So yeah. how was it trans? <laughs> How was it transitioning from you know you being a dancing doll to now you being a singer dance wise? Oh, um, I think being a singer taught me how to be sexy. Like I learned how to be more mm-hmm. seductive. I learned how to like flow with my moves instead of just trying to stick, 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 stick. Like I learned how to be neater with my moves. Mm-hmm. Um, Soft like, dip- too softer like yeah because i would like with dogs like it's major at dance so you were trying to like hit it hit it hit it hit it but with thing right. is it's hit it mm, like it's like a more mm-hmm. smooth it's a finesse like, yeah like it's not yeah. just so get it on the nail type thing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um with you coming from dd4l to now you being a part of alabama state um you coming there that, that was brand new to you, you know, new friends, new everything. So how was it, you know, you being on TV um to now you being in reality basically? Like was it like bomb rushing? Like a lot of people like coming at you a lot? Like it wasn't too crazy because people knew. So it was like they knew that they couldn't talk to us either. So I guess that was really more so yeah. plus that because they knew that we would get in trouble if they even just tried to talk to us. So like, I kind of took that as like a little leeway out of that kind of situation because yeah. if somebody came up to me, I literally could just be like, no, 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 like and stuff. And it's not my fault. It's like, you literally can't come up to me. So like, <laughs> <laughs> easier with like with that going on. But like once it was over, it was definitely a little difficult because, like, I had certain, like, of course, like, when high school day or something would come, like, it would just get real crazy in there. And then people would just stare when people would just take pictures and stuff. So they used to just be like, why are you looking at me? Like, you see, like, right. it's just me. <laughs> and stuff. So, like, the but it'll be weird. Like, Alabama State was kind of mm-hmm. crazy. Like, you go through. And it's like, everybody's just going to turn and stare at you. Like, it was pretty weird with that perspective. Like, if you was to dress oh, yeah. up watching you walk so it's like it was like stuff like that was pretty weird but um outside of that that's kind of it was kind of <laughs> more open and open to like me because i'm not like that type of person either that's like oh like that's not me so with my energy mixed with mm-hmm. their energy they realized that i was not even that kind of like person or whatever i would say right so it was kept the energy then like crazy mob energy so <laughs> Yes, because I know coming, you being brand new, I know it was like a lot of people just staring, looking. I know. Yeah, I know how was. I feel. I, <laughs> I know how it feels, okay? So how was Janae as a captain? And what is something that you learned from her that really stuck with you throughout your um, years as a singer? Um, Janae was pretty great. She was more so a feisty, like, she was a feisty captain. Like, she made sure you just had, like, that extra something. Like, she that just oomph. get it oomph. Like, yeah. I don't know yeah. how to just exactly put it, but she really taught me how to be seductive. Like, that's the one thing I know for a fact that I learned from Miss Janae Harrington. Like, yes, to ma'am. be seductive. Like, if she ain't teach me nothing, she taught me how to feel myself, like, touch myself when I dance. Like, mm-hmm. it was like her 
getting into a grown or woman type of thing. Like she really transitioned me from high school dancer to college dancer, I would say. So that's yeah. like came from her. Yeah. Yeah. She, she let me tell you something. Miss Harrington is that girl, okay? Your mama is that girl. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So what do you think you learned about yourself um during your crab year? Um hmm. I learned that I learned growth, I would say. Like, mm. yeah. I learned that I don't just always know how to do something. I learned how to be like more patient with my mm -hmm. learning. I learned that everybody is not going to move as fast as my I will. Like I had to learn a lot of patience. Yeah. Not just within other people, but within myself, I had to learn a lot of patience because like some stuff that I would want to go quicker would go slow. And then like some stuff mm -hmm. that I eat at all, they would be gone past it like it was nothing. So it was like it was just certain stuff that I just had to learn how to get into it more, pretty much. Like I had to learn how yeah. to be sick. Like, you know, it was it was a lot because it was a big transition yeah. for me. It was. Most definitely. I, I yeah, yeah. What would you say was one stinging element that really caused so much trouble for you? What did you struggle with? If if you did struggle with anything? Yeah. Definitely stands and Probably like turnaround counts and stands, I would say. Only because um, I just was never used to doing anything like that. Like the only time I ever in my life got in the stands outside of middle school was like when we did one episode when we were in blue. I don't remember where we were. I know mm -hmm. we were in Texas. Yeah. I don't remember what we were doing though. But that's the only like thing I ever did in the stands that was recent enough to like compare outside of tour stuff as well. But mm -hmm. it was like, I wasn't used to that at all. Like I wasn't used to having to watch somebody throw something and then me catching on to it. Like I was like, <laughs> I, I just could not do it. Like I was like that first week, it was hell. Like I just could not that first week. Like I could not do it. I just could. I didn't understand how they could just remember it or know what she was throwing by seeing the last four eight. Like the last four count. <laughs> like, how do you know? With this, and then it was so many of them that were like twin sister counts, triplet counts, and I'm like, yes. look, I don't know which one of these she just threw. Like it was just, it was a lot for me having to yes. realize. I had to understand failure too. So like that was another thing I had to learn because I was like, mm -hmm. look, I'm not gonna be perfect. I just gotta accept it. Like <laughs> because y'all are con the dolls, well, dancing dolls, they are conditioned to just like throwing the captain throwing a count. And just like y'all throw it after and it just stops, yeah. you know. But that yeah. continuous thing, that is hard to get. Like hard. I I I know that was hard. No, I was like, look. So, <laughs> the turnaround. <account. laughs> look, ooh, baby. <laughs> I know. So um, did you have any, you know, you with you coming from the dancing dolls, did you have any fans that were just like just really anticipating you and and had high expect high expectations for you yeah i think like I did, did you feel like you it was like a lot for you yeah it really kind of was because it's like not only am i just doing this from am i just doing this for myself it's like other people outside of myself are looking up to me because i would have i was the first dancing doll to ever make Alabama State dancing, period. So it was like, it was all on me at that point, like to set the tone pretty much for where we come from to be on Alabama State or whatever. And with the fans, it was yeah. a lot. They wanted me to go there. So they were pushing for me to go there and stuff because mm -hmm. I was giving like little small hints and stuff. So they were like yeah. pushing for me to go stuff. So they were really kind of anticipating like just me coming in just like, just, yeah. you know going crazy and stuff so fans tend to do that too because like they don't they don't let crabs be crabs a lot of the times so yeah. i understand it was a lot of pressure on you i know it was and with you saying um that you were the first thing at i'm glad that you said that because that's my next question like how were how does it feel being like the first dd4l sting at it feels pretty great like that's history for me <laughs> It's like I didn't make history. Like even if other people don't look at it like that, like I really made history in my eyes, right. in my 
eyes and my team's eyes. Like, that's history for us. So it's like, it means more than people actually really know because people don't know what I went through to get where I am. And of course, right. they're going to put a picture on whatever, but it's like they don't know what I went through mentally and physically, even as a kid, to get to where I was. So it's like a lot of stuff means yeah. more to me really know i would say so and that's one of the things that that's like that means a lot to me yeah like you said you made history being the first dd4l stink at hey that's <laughs> that's stamped already shoot hmm. so how was your relationship with your crab sisters oh my gosh i love them all so much i kind of was like the girl in the middle at all times like i was the one mm -hmm. that everybody was pretty cool with and i do mean everybody every group like, I was the friend that could walk up into these three-person group and be the fourth person, like, and then yes. walk into the group and be the third person in their group. Like, <laughs> that, that, was, that was pretty much cool with everybody. But it was kind of a downfall because, like, if a conflict would happen, it would it would be on me to, like, pick a side. Yeah. So, like, that was, right. like, bad part in the downfall. I just had to learn to be, to not put an opinion on anything. I had to learn how to do that. So I was like, yeah, no, I know how to stay in the middle of everything and not not <laughs> anybody upset at me. Like, I already yes. knew how to but that's my way through stuff. So, yeah. Gotta, so, and, then, and then with you coming from, from a team with so many different girls, so you are pretty much conditioned to that, you know? You kind of yeah. staying away from a lot of the drama. Yeah. Most definitely, yes. Um, as a crab, who, who took you under their wing? Like, who was your big sister? My big sister was Milagros. That's my yes, little. Yes, ma'am. Yes. She, kind of, <laughs> she really did take me under her wing. Me and Loggy, we used to go run at parks, walking at parks. Like, it was just, she was yeah. my sister. Like, I used to always be able to call on her, talk to her, any stand, any, anything. Like, that was who I went to. It was definitely, yeah. yeah definitely. Like I love Milagros. She's so sweet. She really is. She is. Um. What was your most memorable moment during your crab year? Um, oh, I know. <laughs> I think it was um it was one of what's his name? Lil Nas, one of Lil Nas songs. Most mm -hmm. memorable I forget messing up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Moment. That's something I would never forget. Like that's something I will remember off the top of my head whenever somebody says sing it, like off the top of my head. Moment. <laughs> Child. Okay. So how was Miss Scott? How was Miss Scott as a coordinator? Oh, I loved Miss Scott. She was like, she was pretty great. Like she cared a lot about like physical health, like mm -hmm. good, like stuff like that. And we were always on time. That's something I really like with Miss Scott. I never went through like this kind of like, even with Magic City Classic, the only reason we were, like, we would be, like, up all night. Like, I never, with Dance the Dolls, yeah. I was having to be up all night with and doing stuff. And so, when I got on Sing Gates, I thought it was going to be the same way because they would tell you stories. Like, when we are doing this, we would be up all night. Like, before Magic City, we would be up all night before this. And it's, like, I really didn't want to do that again. So, I was, like, I'm going to try my best yeah. to just on time and make sure it's done on time. I mean, Sky really helped a lot with that, too, as a coordinator because she was always on time. So it was like we never had a day where we had to just miss sleep. Like we're already missing sleep for practice, but there was never a day to miss sleep for just preparing yourself. So that was something I really liked about yeah. her. And like physical health, like I said, she always carried like the big bag of medicine, like always, like the big huge thing of medicine. I love mm -hmm. that. Right? Um, and you just didn't really want for nothing. Like Yeah. She just always had everything. Like, if you need a needle and thread, she got it. If you if you need cream, she got it. It could be crazy stuff. Like, she got it, though. Like, all you got to do is mm -hmm. give, her, give it to you, and you got it. Like, <laughs> that's what I like. Yes. And then uniforms, too. A1. <laughs> A1. Every single, every single uniform was A1. The execution yeah. was just everything, okay? <laughs> so how was your first game experience? Oh, it was terrifying. I was really scared my first game because Janae really been losing me. Like, when I was on the front row, I didn't know I was going to be on the front row. So, I had never <laughs> practiced on the front row. Like, I had never did none of that, even in practice. So, it was like, mm -hmm. even with stuff like Hell Alabama, you have to remember, like, if you're in the front, on the front row, you have to go at certain times with certain stuff. So, it was like, I right. had to 
that, but I had to remember that because if I mess it up, I'm going to be in trouble. So it was like, mm-hmm. I was just thinking to myself, like when she was putting this information, I was like, wait a minute, what? Like, she was like, yeah, right there, Wilson. And I'm like, oh, no. Like, I knew then. Like, <laughs> I, I was not. <laughs> she going to put me yeah. out there. But yes, so that was like first game. I was really terrified, but when I saw like Miss Diana and like Princess and all them, that's what kind of smoothed me. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, it's people here like that I know are here to like really support me. So like, mm-hmm. that's what. But you just really felt comfortable. Me. Yeah, it made me comfortable. It made me chill out. Yeah. And it just made me instant towards the end. Yeah. Because let me tell you something, that feel show was sickening. Okay. <laughs> that feel love- show was sickening. It was. I love that. Show. That was a good feel show. That was a really good feel show. I love that feel show. What was your favorite feel show from 2019? Um, Nasty Girl was probably my favorite feel show. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. I said that, that we did it a lot and then like we would tr- we would switch it up and stuff. So I think that's why it was like one of my favorite ones because it wasn't just like one, yeah. one feel show set to it. It was like multiple ones set to it. So I like that about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> do you have any favorite memories with Miss Harrington? Um, definitely her birthday. That's my <laughs> favorite memory with her. Yeah, her birthday. Yeah. Who was lit? <laughs> <laughs> with Janae coming from um YCDT and you coming from Dancing Dolls, and now she's your captain. Like, how was that? Like, did y'all have like this rivalry beef? <laughs> fun little beef um no we really didn't like honestly because janae we really just bonded differently like the very first day i met janae i ain't gonna even kept i quit the first the first day uh we but it was <laughs> it was not just me it was like four of us i think it was if i'm not mistaken it was me brianna naya and love joy or charlize i don't mm-hmm. remember which one it was but i know I know us three was gone for show. So it was like <laughs> something had happened the very first day after we made the team. And we like walked away. It was said to Janae though. But that was like my first moment really getting YCDT Janae, like getting a moment like that. Yeah. Ever since that day, because of course they didn't let us leave. Like ever since that day, um, it just was different. And then like we just ended up bonding, like getting super duper duper close. Like Janae told me before and even my teammates when I wasn't even around them, like one day they were all at dinner or something. And I think I was sick. I don't know where I was, but I think I was sick. But I know I wasn't there. They ended up FaceTiming me. And she was like, you're my favorite crab. Like you're this. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was her. But like that was, we had a real good relationship. We had a really good relationship. Like we never even really talked about like YCDT dancing. I was like, we never even discussed it. Yeah. Like she was, really more so like my real big sister like in real life like it was that's my boo yeah. i love you one thing about <laughs> janae she loves her babies that's she don't play about her babies she loves her babies she really do she <laughs> really loves her babies um how did it feel um leading that basketball game at your crab year <laughs> i was kind of overwhelmed <laughs> a lot of what's the word energy i would say I had a lot of energy mm-hmm. that day because I was happy because I knew it was like coming. So like, it was pretty fun. It was fun. It was scary, but it was fun because I was so overwhelmed yeah. that like, I just could mm-hmm. not stop. Like, you know how like that just comes upon you and you're just dancing. You just like I just can't stop. Like, I just can't stop. Mm-hmm. So it was really overwhelming. Yeah. And I, yeah. I I know your adrenaline was rushing. I know. Probably your anxiety was rushed too. I know it was a lot of pressure on you. Yes. Just to remember all them counts and you were crabbing. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, so going into your second year as a Stingette, what did you want to do differently? I just wanted to read stands, I would say, honestly. With more yeah. so my focus, because I was finally comfortable. And I knew that I was comfortable. I remember the moment, the exact moment that I got comfortable with stands. It was the game before Turkey Day. We were at um, Florida State, I think. Um, mm-hmm. At the time, I think we were at Florida State or something. So 
that's what we were in. That was the exact game that I knew that I was comfortable with things. Like, I felt it in my soul at that game. So I was like, yeah, ever since then, it was like a smooth roller for me. So coming into my second mm-hmm. year, like, yeah, stands are going to just be amazing, epic. I really was like, the field show and, like, how it would be, but, like, we never actually got to do one. So that was, like, a bummer. But yeah, stands was definitely, like, focus, a real focus. Yeah. How was um Brianna as a captain at that time? She was pretty great. Um, she was really fast paced. I would say Brianna was, and she was more so like mm-hmm. this pop sing it vibe kind of get that I got from her. But she was pretty yeah. great. Like great, she was a great captain. Yeah. Did you take anything like? Did you take anything away from her as far as like any type of um things that she normally does at practice? Like, did you take anything away from her? Um, probably like the way she would teach a dance, I would say, is something that I took away mm-hmm. from her. That she goes really like quickly and yeah. get it go through it, and she'll do it enough times for you to like get it. But like she gonna go through it quicker than quick, and then, you know me, I'm fast paced. So like that was something that right. I kind of I took from her. Yeah, yeah. Um. How did you guys maneuver um, in 2020 being that, you know, COVID was here and, well, it's still here, obviously, but <laughs> how did you guys maneuver around that 2020 season? Um, I think it was pretty, it kind of really sucked, like, honestly, but I really don't know how we ended up getting to do so many games, but I'm grateful that we got to yeah. do so many Um, because that was basically my last season, so, like, that... Yeah. It, that kind of made me happy about that, that we had to do a lot of games. But it was kind of difficult, like, having to be in certain spots sometimes and not being able to always be at the real practice hall and the choir room. Like, it was a lot of stuff that, like, was kind of, would kind of hinder it. Like, we'd get our hopes yeah. up, so practice this whole field show and did not be able to do it. Like, it was, like, certain stuff that was going on during COVID that kind of messed it up a lot. But we ended yeah. up making it work. We made it work. Privilege. Yeah, y'all made it work. Y'all definitely made a lot of things work 2020 season. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> now that you are considered an upperclassman, like, who did you take under your wing? Who was your little sister? Jalen was my little sister. That's my baby. That's my sweetheart, my little yellow. I it's love Jalen so much. I love her so much. Like, she really grew. She really she, grew as a dancer. Oh, she, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so okay. what is the difference in leadership between Miss Scott and Miss Amir? Um, I would say it's not just much of a difference in leadership because they kind of give me the same they kind of gave me the same like vibes mentally. Like they gave me the same vibes. Um mm-hmm. the difference I would say is Miss Amir was more so focused on like a sexy, seductive thing, and Miss Scott was more so a hip hop-ish sing it to me so it was like they were just different in like what they wanted as dancers i would say and like what they wanted the team Mm. to look like very different from each other so that's definitely like a key point in in their like change up yeah i could see i can definitely see that because amir Amir, she is definitely more of that sex sexy sing it so i definitely get that 100 percent um what made you not return for this past season, 2021. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, it was honestly a lot of reasons. And some of them I'm not gonna say because I don't wanna yeah. down any. But um one of the main reasons was for myself, I would say. It was like, I was just tired of living this life of not being able to choose what I really wanted to do, not yeah. being able to like live for myself. My cat is meowing. She's so crazy. It's okay. <laughs> she won't even come from my bed and now she want to start meowing. Like, okay. Right. But basically like I was tired of living in life where like I just couldn't choose my own path. And so it's like, I wouldn't even say that I couldn't just choose it because I had a choice but it was like, I was tired of not having freedom, I would say, because right. I never had freedom for myself as a, a young adult. Like, I never got to experience a lot of stuff. So 
I just wanted to finally experience it. Like I never had summer before. Like I wanted to have my own summer. Like I wanted to be yeah. my own thing. Like instead of everything being so just focused on dance, 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 because I was so yeah. new that, that it got to a point that my passion was leaving because people were so strict about it rather than it being a love, I would say. So yeah. I, I knew I had to take a break. Like I knew I was like, yeah, it's time for me to probably just focus on education more than dance now because at some point I knew I was gonna have to leave and it was like I didn't want to but I knew it was gonna come because education was much more important so like and then that was not even something that was even in my head because at first it was dance over education but Dr. Oliver is the one who put in my head that it's education over dance like period one who taught me like no that is way more important than this like you know and stuff like that so like that's really something that I got from him that just made me realize like okay when it comes to the, when it comes down to the moment where you have to choose between yourself and like something else i always choose you so like that's yeah. why this was like and i'm glad it. he instilled that in you too because a lot of people don't realize education is comes first when you go to college that's the main thing that's the reason why you're going to college college you're so, not yeah. like yeah so yeah. i had to realize that like, i had to realize that yeah um so if you would have stayed and if you would have gotten captain what do you think what do you think that you would have given the audience um it probably would have gave i don't even know like <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know like once i had let it go i had let it go i was like you know what yeah i'll do that to myself like torture myself yeah. But I think that if I would have got, if I would have stayed, it probably just would have gave like I don't know, just power. Like honestly, yeah. kind of to what Brianna gave, like because yeah. that's my. So it was like it kind of would have been more so ish, the same ish kind of thing. My yeah. I just like I'm a field show girl, so like I said, them field shows would have been mm, with the eighth girls up every See. time. Like see. yeah, most definitely. Oh yeah, week. I can I can definitely see them field shows doing something, baby. <laughs> Okay. A show. <laughs> a show. <laughs> so how did being a stingette prepare you as a woman? Um, it gave me like that little it gave me the extra push, I guess I would say, over men in certain like situations because it's like it made me know what I want pretty much. Like, cause it was so many women around yeah. me with so mindsets it made me realize like what i want in a person like what i want to be as a woman what i want to offer as a woman like it just it really helped me just settle into myself and make me choose myself i would say because i was around some yeah. women themselves and leaving their best life and like all this but it's mm -hmm. like i never that choice for myself so i guess they instilled in me like to just be myself choose myself and be confident about whatever choice i make like and rock with it like that's what i would say yeah they make you stand on yes, it like no. yes okay. yes <laughs> um what would you say was your biggest strength as a dancer um my biggest strength as a dancer i had a couple of them now like mm, it was a couple i guess being able to do everything was my biggest one with my team um i was kind of like stunt dummy like whatever yeah. she needed <laughs> you have to do it um phil shows calling me out there to help her like it was like i was the one who could do it all and as long as i could do it everybody could do it too so it was like right. that she knew that like as long as Deja can do this i know everybody can at least learn it or whatever because it's learnable and it's possible so like i think that's something that i really brought because i could do a lot of stuff which pushed the team to do a lot of stuff as well mm -hmm. Now, now that I can do it, like I said, if one, if one person can do it, we all can do it. So it was like y'all can, that, right? That kind of stuff. And I brought, I just, I was sad brought that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. With, I mean, you being so vocal about your weight journey, um, could you discuss <laughs> body image? Like, how how did it affect you in any way? Like, and I know a lot of girls, <clears throat> they really talk about you know their bodies and how you know sometimes it could be kind of negative in their minds so how how did you overcome that yes okay so um, i kind of went through a lot of stuff that previous like COVID year i had got COVID like 
three or four times back to back. So it was like, yeah, it was a lot. And you know, with wow. the with can I eat? You can't do nothing really. So like, mm -hmm. imagine not eating for two months straight. Like that's horrible. So it was like that's the kind of stuff that I was going through at home. And so mm -hmm. coming back, it was like it was really hard to try to get everything back because a sickness literally right. took. So it was like there was nothing I really could do to try to get everything back to get it all right. And so I really just had to get comfortable. Like I had to remain, I had to stay confident and remain confident, I would say, within myself because it's like I know that if I really want that body or that this, that I could just work to get it because I had it before. So it would always be there. Yeah. Like there's something I know is possible. So I guess that was kind of my boost with it. It was like a yeah. I really put the work in, I'll get it done or whatever. And so it was on me pretty much. So I couldn't just tear myself down without about not having it anymore because it was like, it's on me. Yeah. Like if I really, I'm going to go back and get it. But like, until I decide to stop being a procrastinator, right. <laughs> like, you know, and then it'll come or yeah. whatever. But like, yeah, I really just kind of looked at it like that. And then my teammates, when, like I said, when you're confident, like it doesn't really matter. And stuff. And I'm really not a person yeah. that like, I don't really let people, opinion or anything say it matters to me i would say because if i already tore myself down about it how can you tear me down about it so it's like okay that's how i go about life like i always i always think the worst not to just think the worst but just to prepare myself mentally just in case the worst happens so it's like i go through life like right. that i'll be more prepared to like more prepared for failure because failure is common so like i guess i would say that's that was like my little extra boost yeah. like i was confident within whatever I chose or whatever like happened with me I was just confident about like whatever like it is what it is type thing and so once you're confident yeah who confidence like, is key confidence is key like yes confidence is key baby yes ma'am um so what did you enjoy most about being a stingette honestly just being able to be out there like that was just everything to me I would say Cause like just imagine yeah. just as it just working so hard to be something wanting something so bad and it's finally there. Like it was just every yeah. moment for me that meant everything. Like that team, that's that's my team. Like I'm right at that thing, yeah. Mm. But <laughs> right at that. Yes, ma'am. So like yeah. that's I would say it was more so like a dream come true, like a check off my bucket list type of thing. But like yeah. a. a Longer, meaningful bucket list type of memory type thing. Something that I really know yeah. I wanted to life. And it's like I got that at such a young age. And it's like something that nobody can take it from me. Nobody can take it from me. And so that's, I just love it. I love being able to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I love being able to say that. <laughs> and can't nobody say nothing to me about it because I'm a thing yet. Like, okay. Period. Yeah. Period. Shoot. So now. We're about to go into fan questions. So I have the first fan question from Max Davenport. If you could have crabbed under any Stingate captain from any year, who would you have chosen? I would have chosen... Mm, I'm trying to compare their years. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I... Probably would have chosen Asia. Yeah. Ooh, I can see you under Asia. Yeah. That'll be would, cute. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> That'll be cute. Yes. I have another question from um, Tamara Chambers. She says, describe your craft sisters in one word. Spontaneous. <laughs> mm. All of them. You got to do all of them. Oh, all of them. Okay, let me go one by one. Yes. Um, Brianni, in one word, hilarious. She's hilarious. That's one of the funniest people I ever met. Um, <laughs> Naya, mm, I can't say that. I already said hilarious. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Naya, I would say confident. I would say mm -hmm. most definitely very confident very into like being a woman very like very woman yeah yeah um, feisty yes super feisty that's my <laughs> that's my hot mom yes. but I, 
I knew how to deal with my Mari. So it was like, like I said, I was uh, in the middle. So nobody yeah. really ever had a problem with me. Um, who else? Courtney. Courtney was the spontaneous one, the one that was just like, we do whatever, we're lit, whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> most definitely. That was Courtney. Charlize, ooh, that was my hood baby. So my hood, she was <laughs> like, little Miss Ghetto. So we're gonna say Miss Ghetto, Ghetto, yeah. I loved her though. Like, she was with whatever, like, ride or die friend. Like, she like one of them friends. Like, if you know you gotta pull up somewhere, she gonna come with you. Like, that's Charlize. Okay. Um, <laughs> Daria is Daria is funny too. People think she's quiet, so I'm gonna say quiet. Yeah, I'm gonna say quiet because mm -hmm. when you know Daria, you would think that she don't talk, mm. but you would think but when you really know Daria, like she is like total opposite of that. So that's why. Right. Cool. Did they have all of them? Did yes. I okay. I think so. I think so. Yes. Um. So I have another one from Chris Armstrong. Do you plan on pursuing dance professionally in the future? Yes, I am. I plan on doing a lot of stuff up here in Houston. I just haven't got it yet because I'm just trying to get everything else together before I just settle yeah. on down and myself within the community. But yes, I do plan on furthering everything, getting into like bookings, going out to LA. Like I plan on doing all of it. I just got to get settled. And once I get settled, it's going to be on and popping. Like, yeah. Yes. I have a, uh, this last question from um, Daryl Jerome. He says, how did you get the nickname Daisy? Um, Honestly, I don't even know how I got it. It kind of just came, like, it just pretty much came up, like, out of nowhere. And then on tour somewhere, it just, like, started. And it's just been, like, Daisy ever since. Like, you know how your mm -hmm. grandma or, like, somebody or your papa or anybody just start calling you, like, little nicknames like Minnie or, like, yeah. Stuff like that. So it was kind of like one of those just crazy like nicknames that just came out of nowhere. Right. Yes, yes. So now everybody going to Fast Pass. So Fast Pass, uh, do you know how Fast Pass works? Mm -mm, what's Fast Pass? So Fast Pass is basically I'll throw something out, like I'll say something, and then you have to like basically answer it, but fast. Okay. Some of them might be either or questions. So, you know. Um, so this one is top three uniforms. Oh, go like I gotta go. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, top three uniform. Can it just be for my year or like my year? I will. Your yeah, your year. My okay. Top three uniforms. All white Major City Classic entrance uniform. Um, Labor Day Classic number two uniform. Yeah. Um, and the third one would be first game. Yeah, first game. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll the way she transformed that uniform, I still gag. <laughs> right. She transformed that uniform like crazy. Right. Um, so leotard or two piece? Mm. Two piece. Fast, medium, or slow? Slow. <laughs> well, you've already you've already said favorite for halftime show. I already said that. Favorite song in the stands. In the stands, ooh, what is it called? Okay, I just can't think about it right now, so I'm just gonna say leg shaking. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, favorite count. Oh, my favorite count is Amber Sixteen Fast. Yes, I love that one. Yes, yes, yes. Um, 2019 or 2020. 2019. Yes. <laughs> leading or follow, following? Leading. Stands or halftime show? Halftime. Yes. Magic City Classic or Homecoming? Oh, Homecoming. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so that's it for Fast Pass. I have like four more questions, okay? Okay. What would you say was your overall goal as a dancer? Um, my goal as a dancer, honestly, it's just to, to inspire people to like extend beyond what they think they can do because I'm a, I'm an all around dancer. So it's like, 
I try to inspire people to like not just stick the one to the other dance. Like anywhere I go, I'm always gonna say, I think you should get into this kind of training. I think you should get into this kind of training because you would just be surprised how much having all that knowledge will further you and make it easier for you to get into certain stuff and to get a yes. It's like it's easier when you extend yourself to much more things and you it's less disappointment, I would say. So I always try to tell people to like just extend yourself. So that's something yeah. I would say. Yeah. Always help. Yes, ma'am. Um, if you had an all-star team of 12 stingets mm -hmm. with you being the captain, who would be on your all-star team? Um, Amber. It gotta be 12 people. Yeah. Amber. Uh Jenny. Well, eleven, because you were already Oh yeah, you okay. Were okay, Amber, Jada. Um, uh, Tay. Um, definitely Brianna. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amari. Definitely Amari. Um, who else? Courtney. Um, not my craft is Courtney. Courtney, I can't remember her last name right now. Courtney, um, go to something like that on Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. Yep, yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah. Asia, Janae, Jada, not Jada Denny, the other Jada. Um, mm -hmm. Who else would be on my dream team? Mm, La Shanae. Yeah. I need one more person. Um, Did you say your mama? No. <laughs> oh, wait, <laughs> Janae? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm thinking about my real mama, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I say her, I say her. Um, my last person would be who this last lucky person would be? Probably Kiki. I really like Kiki. Oh so. yes. That'll be cute. That's a cute oh yeah, like, that's cute. That's right. I can definitely see it. I can definitely see that. <laughs> yes. So what is um what advice would you give somebody that wants to try out to be a stingy? My advice would be to learn learn a field show, a couple of field shows. If you can learn a couple of field shows and you can bust them out and do them exactly how they're on that video, I promise you your chance to make stingy X is probably a 99.5% chance. As long as your competition don't outdo you, a 99.5% chance to make the team. That's definitely advice. I also would inform you to not get your fingernails done or toenails done. I would just say to wear press-ons because mm -hmm. it's a waste of money, like a literal waste of money. So that's something I like to encourage. Also with hair, sew you a wig on because it's a waste of money. Like, don't even <laughs> <laughs> don't okay. even gotta be the baddest one, but I'm telling you, all that money is going to be a complete waste because right after you make it, that money down the drain because them nails gotta go gotta go mm -hmm. all they gotta go so it's like i would just say those couple of things right there are definitely advice that people probably won't even tell you but that's some essential advice with this <laughs> yes <laughs> like, yes yes that's my so how was how was life after being the sting it and what are your future plans Life after being in the Stingay was pretty great. A lot of doors opened up. Um, a lot mm. of different, like, more opportunities to, like, book and, like, teach and host and do different things. Because not only was I just a dance doll, now I'm in the HBCU world, which is a whole different ball game of fans. Like, some of it is mm -hmm. the same. Like, it's a whole nother ball game of people, a whole nother culture, a whole nother everything, pretty much. So, it's yeah. like, it's like graduating from major ed, basically, I was saying. So, yeah. It was like a different everything. So that kind of really was the reasoning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Well, I want to thank you so much for this interview. I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot today. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I just want to What'd you say? I said, it's what I like to hear. <laughs> period. Period. Well, yes, I want to thank you so much, OK? You're welcome. Thank you for giving me the platform to speak. So Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, I'll talk to you later, man. Okay. All right.